In this video, I want to talk about the Seabush element force equations for fx, fy, and fz. Now, we're used to using the simple equation f equals kx. Even the Nastron documentation for the Seabush says that the force on the spring is equal to the stiffness of the uh, spring times any change between both ends of the spring, so ub minus ua. So here, if I have A, and then here's my spring, and then here I have B. In this scenario, it's very simple to calculate the, the force. Sometimes when you use Nastran, though, this equation does not apply. And in this video, I want to go over why this equation does not necessarily apply. So here, let's, let's just do a quick example. Um, we're going to move point B by positive 1, and maybe our stiffness is uh, 100. So here, F is equal to 100 times 1 minus 0, which is equal to positive 100. So it's very simple. It's positive 100. I went ahead and used Nastran to do this. And let's go ahead and maybe attach the results. Let's actually look at the deformations for this example. And here, I'll just look at the spring on the left. You see we've offset point B by one. So we should expect the element force in the C-bush to be 100. In fact, I do not get 100. I get negative 135. So again, in this video, I want to sort of dive into more detail regarding why don't we get 100? Why do we get 135 instead? So let's go ahead and create a new page here. And let's look at this in more detail. If we look at the rotations, we see that we actually get non-zero rotations for the z-axis, so here we get 0.7. After some experimentation, I found out that this equation only applies when the rotations are zero at both ends of the spring. So here, if you remember the spring, after deflection, if you will, so here we have B prime for deflected point, the orientation, X prime, Y prime, is the same as before, X prime, or X and Y. So this is the orientation before, and this is the orientation after. There's no rotation, so both of these uh, orientations are the same, theta is the same, so this equation applies. When you have a rotation though, that's when this equation no longer holds. So here, let's go ahead and draw another example. This is B, this is A, this is B, and now it's been rotated some amount, X prime, Y prime. Theta is now 0.7 as an example. So this is B prime, and it's been uh, oriented here. So in this case, my spring force would be 100, but in this case, my spring force is actually 135. So what's going on here? I am going to point you to this blog post. Nastran C. Bush configuration sign convention and element force equations. If you scroll down a little, there's an image that has a copy of the equations that I think explain what's going on here. Uh, so let me do this. Let me go ahead and copy this image. Let me zoom in. Let me take a screenshot, actually. Take a screenshot of this. Let me copy it. Let me copy it here. And let me do this. Let me, we're only going to be dealing with, oh wow, that's interesting. We're 
we're going to be using the equation for Fy. So let me rewrite this a little differently. Or let me rewrite it again since uh, it's a little faded. It might be a little hard to look at the equation. So the force along the y-axis is equal to the spring constant along the y-axis times delta gby minus delta gay. So this is the normal equation that we're all used to. But then there's this arc length component that seems to work. Now, I could be wrong in this. So let me go ahead and do d4 minus theta g a z and d3. So here, if, if you look closely, or let me actually draw a diagram. Um, I'll draw a diagram. Well, I guess I'll draw for both. Suppose this is the element coordinate system for the uh, C bush. And then here is going to be our positive theta. So you could think that there is some distance here. I'll call it D4. And there is some distance here, D3. So here is GB. And here is GA. So there is an arc length here defined by D4 times the rotation at GA about the Z axis, or sorry, the B, GBZ. So there's this arc length here, and then there is going to be another arc length here at the bottom. So this would be our positive theta. So you could think this arc length would be a negative D3, which is start you here, and then you're going to swing along this direction. So this arc length is a uh, theta at GA about the Z axis times D3. So far, from the few tests I've done, these this seems to work, but I am not 100% clear on why it works. Um, by, by luck, I managed to, to get this far. So if you know why the second expression works, please let me know. But there seems to be something happening here where the rotation causes some sort of a, a scenario where the spring elongates along an arc, and that's included in the equation for the element force. So let me do this. To prove to you that this works, let me actually take the results and let's go ahead and do a quick uh, test. So let me go ahead and do this. So let's look at GA and GB. So the translation at GB is 1, 0, 0, and then the rotation is 0, 0, positive 0 0.7. So this is a T for translation, R for rotation. And then here, the translations are both 0 for, for GA, so we won't worry about that right now. Now, let's look at the orientation. So this is my X element axis. This is the Y element axis. So let's go ahead and transform these results to the element coordinate system. So here, let's see, what do we have here? So this is positive one. So GB is going to have a vector of zero, negative one, zero, E for the element coordinate system. And then this is going to be for translations for rotations. It's all the same, 0.7. In the element coordinate system. So now we know that the spring constant is 100. So ky is equal to 100. We'll go ahead and plug it into this equation. So 100 times delta gby, which is negative 1, minus 0. Remember, uh, ga, it's fixed, so 
that offset, that deflection is zero, minus the arc length, 100, theta GB Z, so what is that? 0.7 times D4. So D4, that's this distance, which is positive 0.5. So maybe I'll use parentheses, 0.5. So let me write this a little bit better. 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 minus theta 0, because there's no rotation at GA, times D3. D3 would be negative 0.5. So we'll go ahead and negative 0.5 here, negative 0 0.5. And then we'll, we'll run this. And you will see what we get in a moment. Now, I've been talking for the last, what, five hours, so I'll need to use my calculator to do this very simple arithmetic. And then I get negative 135, which is aligning to the same element force that we have here in the F06 output. So let me quickly recap. The equations that take into account the rotations seem to work. But right now, I'm not 100% clear on why they work. Um, I suspect that the diagrams I've drawn are not accurate. So maybe that's where my mistake is. Um, the equations work, but maybe the diagram is wrong and that's why I, I can't definitively understand what's going on here. So let me quickly say this. If you have zero rotations, The spring force is simply Ke Ub minus Ua. Else, if you do have rotations, then the spring force is actually Ke Ub minus Ua minus Ke times the rotation at A or B times uh, db, I'll call it, minus theta a times da. So when you have non-zero rotations, the actual force in the spring, the actual equation, has a second term to it, which I'll call it the arc length term. And like I said, this equation seems to work well, which is good, but the reasoning why it works, um, I'm just not there yet. I suspect that I'm just not creating a good diagram and that's why I can't make I can't make full sense of these equations. But if you happen to know what's going on here, let me give you my email address. And if you happen to know what's going on here exactly, uh, feel free to send me an email at this address and uh, I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.